The aim of this project was to pressure myself into trying new genres of photography that I had never experienced. My previous work focused so much on photojournalism, especially that of music photography. I felt that I'd become stagnant with this and had no longer been enjoying it. I was just finding myself repeating the same process year after year. Each year, I write a list of all the festivals I'd like to attend. I check the festival's websites to see their application process. If this is not available, I contact their PR company or my agency. Then I wait. I wait. And I wait some more. I apply to a few more. Wait some more. And then hopefully the accreditations come through. I head off. I shoot the festival, photographing mostly the main stage, any reunions or comeback tours that might be going on so that I can try and make some money from the festival to pay for my equipment, my time, my expenses, and I'd love to say for my family, but it never pays that well. I then work late into the evening and get all the images syndicated over to the LA office and hopefully shared online and used. This has been the routine for many years now, so yes, it's getting stagnant. When Joseph Feel approached me for lessons, I knew I would need something that we could use in a confined space which gave us full control of both time and the nature of the work. In doing so, I looked back at what I would call the building blocks of photography and started to build a set of lessons. I was looking at aperture, shutter speed, to make some fun image, but with more discussion I came to learn that Joseph was a former art teacher, photographer and videographer, but he'd never moved into the digital world. So what it turned out was I actually needed to teach him how to use the camera itself rather than teach him photography. One thing Joseph wanted to know was how to control the exposure time on his new camera so he concocted a shoot using a pivot mounted into the ceiling of Joseph's spare room with a torch fitted at the end of the pendulum so that we could spin it and capture the motion. Surprisingly this worked really well. Joseph had his images, had mine, but most of all we had a laugh in doing so which, to me, is the most important part of photography. When we met again, we were looking back through the images we had taken and looked at where we were going to go next. Joseph introduced me to 6,000 marbles he'd bought 20 years before and never got around to using. He asked if I would like to collaborate and build a series of images with them. Strangely, it all fell into place with this project, but I'm certain it will go on long after. My initial thoughts were of macro photography, getting close to and looking at the marbles, but until you've seen 6,000 marbles laid out side by side, you don't get an idea of what you're working with. Then I saw there was so much more on offer, especially when you look at the texture and repetition. Almost minimalism, but at the same time, so many windows for abstract photography. Coming back to my original statement of wanting to do something different and push myself for this project, this really has pushed me far outside of my comfort zone. I started looking at the work of Barbara Caston for inspiration because her work gave me the opportunity to look at still life. Although hers, much larger in comparison to what I'd be working with, it opened my eyes to the chaos theory, the positioning without a clear and obvious reason. Her work seemed to have no justification as to why until you started reading into the work and her mention of temporary theatrical tableau. Going back to our initial shoot, Joseph pointed out that everything we'd used to create the composition had all been found around his house and not bought in. Since the marbles were something he already owned, we agreed that we would not go out and purchase anything for the project, instead recycling and reusing what we already had. At this stage, we also agreed that we did not want to give away what our images were and how they were constructed by, to the viewers. Our initial images giving away nothing but the idea of painting with light. Our second shoot used nothing but leftovers from Joseph's previous art installations that he had stored in a shed at the end of his garden. With these already being handmade, it was easy for the camera to hide what they were and keep the anonymity as they were in the images. For my research into how I was going to make 6,000 marbles look like they were not 6,000 marbles, I turned to Nick Albertson. As he had been using various day-to-day -day household items and creating minimalistic images which look very different to what they actually are. I loved his contrast to the work of Caston, as he had single items and repetition in his images, something that my mind could understand. The way that he uses the texture and tone to create the images, making the colour obsolete, caught my attention at the time, 
and I expected my images to become heavily blue because of the marbles carry on looking at the texture and tone I didn't realize that with time to come I was going to forfeit color altogether throughout the project we have stuck with the rules of reuse recycle the same camera all the lighting was simple hand torches various strengths which we already had but most of all keep the nature of the images discreet one thing I did find hard to understand I was making art from pieces of art which had already been used, exhibited and were older than me but due to the nature of digital photography and my imagination contrasting against Joseph's we had all new concepts for them I have never really worked on a collaboration before and I was learning fast the challenges it would bring one example was where the work was going to go once we were happy with it Joseph had exhibited his work in galleries many many times and produced books but these books were just a catalogue of his work they had no ISBN numbers, they were purely for him and his family. My work has always been with the intention of selling it and exhibiting it. This was an agreement we had to sit down and resolve. In Joseph's mind, he had only ever had a primary audience of his family. My primary audience had always been the picture editors, followed by my secondary audience, being my friends, family and my social media followers. With this, we have agreed that our primary audience will be with the initial book. No ISBN number, this will be purely for friends and family as it has always been for Joseph. Our secondary audience will be those who get to enjoy our work when we exhibit. We will then use their opinions and their reviews to alter the selection and produce a final second edit of the book which will carry an ISBN number and be available. With Caston, Albertson and Francisco influencing the work directly, I feel it must be said that the work of Stanley Kubik's 2001 A Space Odyssey, James Cameron and Ridley Scott's Alien and Aliens, and Mike Hodge's Flash Gordon, were very much the inspiration and narrative for the direction of the images, and the thought process that Joseph and I had when we weren't directly behind the camera. Even at the moment that Alex Raymond's comic turned 1954 television series Flash Gordon would eventually take the whole project black and white. One area which I found to be a challenge in the collaboration side of the project was I'm not a controlling person but I often visualise the way something should be and this often contrasted with Joseph's opinion. Creatively that can work and become amazing but other times it can also be a challenge. One part of the images which I have so control over is the final composition in the camera and the pressing of the shutter. Before and after we discuss everything all the way down to the selection, the cropping and the levels. One stage I am not involved in is the printing, due to both time constraints and a deal that we get from a printer that Joseph knows. Unfortunately, on the 6x4 prints that we use to decide the cropping and the alterations, uh, there has been a situation where the two of them have allowed the printer to process the images themselves and not produced an image which was true to the camera. This Although a challenge has been easily worked around and we have come to an agreement with those images as to how we see them in the output. Some of the challenges throughout the project have also been the differences between the times that Joseph's and I have worked in. He has never looked at his work to sell, making it for friends, family and for the journey. Because of this he has been unaware of the methods being used these days to promote and sell work. Now we have a good routine and a production rate of the work. I have been introducing Joseph to the possibilities of social media, crowdfunding, as we are both on a limited budget and hence the nature of the project. This will hopefully enable us to get the exhibition space and funding to print and frame A2 copies of our images ahead of the shows.